like to call the meeting to order. This meeting is being recorded. I would ask if there's anyone else recording this meeting. Seeing none, if you'd please join me for the Pledge of Allegiance. I pledge, pledge of allegiance, allegiance to the, to the flag, flag of the United, United States, States of America and, and to the republic, republic for which, which it stands, one nation, under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. All right. We have special recognitions this evening, so I'll turn it over to Dr. Brunel for that. We do, Mr. Chair, and thank you. Um, as you can see, we have a packed audience tonight, so a lot of good information that's going to be shared. But our first uh, recognition, and I'd like to invite up to the podium, if you remember back a couple of months ago or so, Mr. Desto was here to share with us that the 351, the Project 351 Ambassador for Auburn Middle School this year was Leah McDonald. And Leah is now here this evening to give us an overview of her experience to date and perhaps even sharing some ideas for plans going forward. So Leah, if you want to come on up to the podium and you can, we'll turn it over to you. Good evening. As you know, in November, I was chosen to represent the town of Auburn as the student ambassador for the Youth Service and Leadership Group Project 351. Recently in January, I attended an event called Launch Day. The experience was amazing and one of the best I've ever had. Like At first, like most people, I was a bit nervous. I had to get on a bus with people I had never met before and travel to Boston. But as soon as I stepped on the bus, I knew it was going to be a great day. Everyone was so welcoming and kind, and I realized we were all there for the same reason, student leadership through service. During my time at launch day, I learned many things, including how to make new friends and how to collaborate in a group. When we first arrived and stepped off the bus, people part of Project 351 had lined the way. They were clapping and cheering for us. I felt very confident because I knew everybody there was supporting me. I couldn't wait to start our day. Our day was inspired by Congressman John Lewis. After everybody took our seats, we heard very inspirational speeches from a variety of people. Once they were finished, we split into groups to start our service. My group went to Cradles to Crayons, which is an organization that helps people in need. They collect books, toys, clothes, and shoes, then package them and send them off. The age they collect for is infants to age 12. There are many different sections within the factory, and I worked on sorting the clothes into certain sizes and categories, such as dresses, infants, pants, shirts, etc. We rejoined once again at the JFK Library. We waited for everyone to come, and then we talked about our day. We went over things like how our day was and how many people we impacted. They told us the actual number of people who we helped, and I could not believe it. 46,008. We were able to help over 40,000 people in need. It was so inspiring and nice to hear. It made me feel like even though I am one person, when we all come together, we can make a difference. Coming up in March, I will be starting spring service. Spring service is where Project 351 and Cradles to Crayons, as previously mentioned, work together on a clothing drive. I will be collecting clothes from the last week of March to the first week of April. My plan is to set up a few boxes around the school and print out flyers. I could also spread the word by speaking to homerooms. So if you have any clothes, I'd be happy to take them. <laughs> I am so excited to see what Project 351 brings. Thank you so much for having me. Any comments or questions? Through the chair, you are a wonderful speaker. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> and great job. Very thank proud. You. Yep, thank you. Very confident up there. And um, we're proud to have you represent us. Thanks for taking on Thank um, you. That responsibility. It's a lot. Dr. Brunel? So the, just to share, that was wonderful, Leah. Um, your experience obviously was tremendously impactful, but if you get us information, I don't know how many clothes that you want um, <laughs> to accept, but we're happy to include in an email notification to our students' families. So give it some thought and you can let me know. Okay, thank yeah, you. Congratulations. Like seasonal, what season you're collecting? And um, it can be for any season. Any season. Mm -hmm. Yeah, just gently worn or like in good condition. Okay. And are the boxes just going to be at your school, or are you planning to put them up at the other schools too? Um, I think it's just going to be at my school, but if people um, could, like, maybe one day I can stay after school a couple of hours and people can come by and drop them off. But okay, that's so something I'd have to look maybe into. details to be announced later? Yeah. <laughs> okay, thank you. That's great. Wonderful job. Any other comments? Mr. Desto. Mr. Desto. <laughs> Through the chair, Ms. Holloway, I just wanted to mention that last year the other schools were generous enough to also place a box by request 
uh, in, in their schools as well. So we were able to do a little bit better because the other schools helped us out. Too. Oh, great. So Maybe we'll, we'll do that again. Leah and I haven't had a chance to really connect on that yet, but we will probably at least politely ask if the other schools are willing to do something, and, and it will help a little bit. Sounds good. Sounds great. Thanks Cent again. Thank Central Thanks. office, too. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. All right. Are there any citizens' comments this evening? Seeing none, we'll move on to the student representatives. Hi. <clears throat> so, NHS, to start off, we just had our elections for the new officers. So, while I am president, this chapter, Aaron, will be taking the NHS president role next year. So. I figured that would be good to brag about him. <laughs> <laughs> Put him on the spot. Um, and that will be March 19th, the induction ceremony. And within the next few weeks, we'll start organizing based on people who got in as of, I think, this week and next week. So that'll be exciting. Mm -hmm. um, the Rockets to Rockets Club is hosting, not hosting, but going to another school's friendship hall to dance. I went last year, and it was a fun time. And I think they're going to have a great time as well. So that was cool. That's coming up. Um, the freshman class is running a dance later this month, and recently a poll was posted on Google Classroom as to what theme it would be. So I think one of them was Glow in the Dark, another one was Spring Fling, Disco, and I think there's another one, but that, that'll be fun, I think so. Um, we the People, Mr. Canarin's AP Government and Mr. Bonaccio's, um, we recently swore in today to help with the elections next week. Um, during the half day, we'll be working all day. So that was exciting as well. We get to learn yeah. what we'll be doing next That's week. Uh, class of Pearl of Pictures will also be that day. So mm -hmm. for the seniors and the yearbooks are coming in. And Mr. Auburn is March 5th. And this Saturday, Griffin Hanfield and I will be going to another youth panel um, event with Congressman McGovern at the University of Massachusetts Amherst. So okay. I'm interested. Very good. Wow, a lot going on there. Yep. Mm -hmm. I'm happy to be back. It's been a little bit. <laughs> but as the winter season kind of dies down, mo a lot of clubs start to go back into the groove of things. So with the music department, the Trium Honor Society, next Monday we are going to Auburn Middle School just to continue promoting to the eighth graders and upcoming freshmen about the high school music program, both band and chorus. So I'm pretty sure for now it's seven band kids and seven chorus kids, and we're all going to the middle school and just talking to them and what the high school music experience is like. And for concerts, it's the March 10th and 12th. March 10th is a chorus concert, and March 12th is a band concert. So it'll be the Tuesday and Thursday. And there's gonna be a little switch up. Instead of having our students being like the cashiers, kind of a special experience, but now we're going to moving on to online tickets. So we're gonna try to experiment with that. Mario Yuen, my name is Renatio. Next Saturday, we're leaving for BC High. Uh, we just had a meeting today after school to discuss with all the delegates that are going. Just kind of get them into it, what it's like, uh, what to wear, um, how, like, parliamentary procedure, all that. And BC High is also super special just because that was my first conference my freshman year. So it's always kind of sentimental for that. Mm -hmm. And lastly, for Science Olympiad, yesterday we just had our second invitation of the year. And for now, we are tied for first in whatever league we are in. I'm not <laughs> sure. <laughs> but we're tied for first with Uxbridge currently. And over the past couple of months, we've had two invitationals. One we hosted at the end of January and one we just went to yesterday. And now we're still s waiting for our final state event, March 21st. Excellent. Welcome back, Aaron. Yeah. I heard some of those tickets are already being scalped now that they're, <laughs> <laughs> they're that hot. <laughs> yeah, you're not worried about that at all, are you? <laughs> <laughs> Any questions or comments? <laughs> Seeing none, thanks. As, as always, a great report. And Thank thanks you. for dragging Aaron back to us. I'm <laughs> 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 Leah, you're welcome to leave as well. <laughs> thank, thank you. Thank you very much. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Have a nice evening. Good night. All right, that was a nice report. Mm. I would now seek approval of the minutes for January 21, 27, and February 5. I make the motion to approve the minutes of January 21, 27, 
Second. I'll second that. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There's a vote. We now move on to the superintendent's report. Thank you, Mr. Chair. So the next um, presentation that we have tonight, we're very excited to have uh, Ms. Peralt and Mr. Bonaccio in attendance. They are the teacher leads. We're here with students Avery Pellegrino and Griffin Hanfield. So we shared with you earlier in the year, I think it may have been in the report that Dr. Chamberlain did about 365Z. Mr. Hanfield, I think, um, had done one as well. But you would ask for them to come back and give some highlights about the work and the good work that they're doing. So with your permission, I will turn it over to them. Excellent. So we're from Auburn High School and we started, three, we brought 365Z, um, which is a foundation dedicated to kindness in everyday life. So this foundation was formed by the parents of a young man named Zach Ford who lost his life at his own hand, tragically. Um, they made it their mission to complete one act of kindness every day, totaling 365 in a year in memory of their son after finding about from his friends and other family members how kind he was on a daily basis to everybody he came in contact with. So that's how this foundation came about and it has spread through schools and workplaces and it's, it's more of a mentality than it is a foundation. So their mission statement is um, basically 365Z, the foundation gives the resources for schools and workplaces to perform conscious acts of kindness in everyday life, whether that be complimenting someone, holding the door for someone, or just giving a friendly smile or wave. Okay, so how this came to Auburn? We're gonna go off the slide, we're just gonna tell our story. So, <laughs> last summer, right before we went back to school, Avery brought this idea to my dad. <laughs> Mr. Hanfield, whatever we call him. Um, and then he spread it to me, and then I got in contact with Avery. And you want to? Okay, so on? then Lester High School had already adopted this program, uh, I believe, last year. So I had a friend who went to Lester, and she was a family friend, and her mom, uh, Catherine Fontaine, at, is part of it at Lester and at the 365Z board level. So she is kind of our contact person for 365Z connecting it to Auburn. And we met with her a couple times just getting t-shirts, getting the resources, getting a binder of kindness quotes. And we had pitched it to um, the school and it caught on and the rest is history. Mm -hmm. So. Okay, so who's involved with this? It's, like I said before, it's a mentality more than it is a club. We never wanted this to be like, hey, if you're in this, this is what you do. If you're not, well, that's too bad. No, this is more of like everybody's involved. The entire school, staff, students, janitors, lunch ladies, everybody's involved top down. Um, like I said, it's a mentality, it's kindness, it's service. Simple things, holding the door for somebody, sitting with someone at lunch who's sitting alone. Um, if someone drops their stuff, pick it up for them. You know, it's really just about being a better person and making our already awesome school a more fun place to be. So we had the teachers nominate a student who kind of sticks out as a teacher. Like teachers can see the students who are not, they have potential, but they don't utilize it correctly. So we had the teachers pick one or two home base representatives who are not involved in say NHS, Rockets to Rockets, that kind of the teachers see their potential and want them to utilize it to its full advantage. Um, so we meet once a month, give or take, with the representatives and Mr. Bonaccio and Ms. Peralt. And we just discuss what we did, what we have planned, and how we think that things are going. So what we have accomplished, so is it freshmen and sophomores that have circles? Okay, so the freshmen and sophomores have circles every other week? Okay, 
so they have home-based meetings every other week and um, in those circles is when we have time that we're trying to like spread this through the younger kids in our building which is now spread down to the younger schools as well but um because when we brought this in we we're like well we're going to be out of here in a few months and then <laughs> how are we going to make this last so through these circles we have instilled these ideas and these beliefs and we have kind of just put it out there to kids like you know to be better people be nice to people it's the small things that make a difference so we also um lester had brought the no student sits alone initiative which, as Griffin had said previously, if a student's sitting alone at lunch, you either, some people like to sit alone, so teach their own, they can sit by themselves and we'll just go back, but we go up to them and say, hey, we notice you're sitting alone, would you like to sit with us or would you like us to sit with you? And then I've done it and I've met some pretty cool underclassmen that just don't have a lot of friends and then sitting with upperclassmen, especially the boys sitting with upperclassmen girls. It <laughs> <laughs> so in addition with all the kindness and the little things in the building, we also tried to bring in a service piece where we focused on giving our time back and helping others to make a difference. So for our first big project to kick this off, we did a food drive that we ended up donating to Veterans Inc. And we had more food than I mean, my truck bed was full, my back seat was full, Mr. Bernaccio's car was full. We had a ton of food. And then uh, we did the veteran, uh, sorry, Valentine's Day goodie bags for the Auburn Senior Center. So the 365Z Foundation had put them together and Catherine Fontaine had given them to me. But in them um, was some body wash, some socks, um, chocolate, um, combs, chips, anything that, you know, could brighten a senior's day. So we delivered those and that. And that was a really good experience. They all loved it. Yeah, yeah. sure they did. <laughs> so here are some pictures. Uh, the first picture is of Mr. Ford speaking at our homecoming assembly as our 365Z kickoff. Um, the students took really, they liked it. Then the second, the middle pictures are of the Veterans Drive. So that's Griffin's truck that's filled. That is our, um, if you look at the top left picture, that's students organizing the boxes because we just took a bunch of things and we had to sort it for alcohol that we couldn't donate or something <laughs> that we couldn't donate. Mouthwash. Yeah, like, <laughs> 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 I mean, I mean, right, right in somebody's Like, head. they had to keep it for themselves, <laughs> right? <laughs> no. um, and then bringing out the boxes to Griffin's car. And then we just took a picture with our banner because everyone loves good photo op. And then the Valentine's Day bags. So the bottom picture is what was in the bags, and the top picture is the front staff loving the bags. So up and coming, we have... It's not ours. Delia Shea, I'm sure you guys remember her. She's doing her toy drive again, and we're going to help assist her with that and try and get more toys for her. Um, and in memory of Mr. Bedard, we were going to put something together for him. We're not quite sure what it's going to be yet. And then um, we really were just talking about this today. We have a meeting tomorrow, actually, um, about collaborating with the elementary schools and maybe going down to meet with them and talk to them and see how things are doing down there and try and show them that, like, hey, we do this stuff too. It's not just something you do in middle school and then forget about it. This stuff carries on. So, Excellent. Any comments? I have a comment. Um, these little things that you guys are doing every day make such a huge difference in the lives of, you know, the stragglers, I guess, or the people that don't really fit in. So I... It just touches my heart. And then the stuff with the senior center, those people, a lot of those people are so lonely, mm -hmm. and these little gestures mean so much to them. So good job. Thank you. Christ. I do have a question. When you were talking about asking teachers to point you to certain students, were they students that were going to join your movement, or were they students you were going to try to help? So in each home base, we have a representative because, I mean, there's two of us, and we try sure. to get this out to the whole school. But Mr. Bernaccio and Mrs. Peralta have been great about keeping this student-run. Like, this is 100% student-run. We come up with our own ideas. They help us activate them and get things done when we need help. 
And um, so in our meetings every month, all the home base reps that have been elected by a teacher will meet with us. Huh. And just the idea behind that is trying to find the students that maybe fly under the radar. You know, they're not star athletes. They're not NHS members. You know, the kids that kind of go and you know, just do their day-to-day -day thing six hours a day and then go home. You know, a lot of those kids have awesome potential and awesome stories that you don't necessarily hear, and that's what we're looking for. I think that's terrific that you're including kids like that, too. I need to, and through the chair, I'm thrilled that you guys are going to propagate this down to the middle school and the lower grades. Um, you know, as early as we can start, you know, get that kind of embedded into them. I think it's a good thing. So thank you guys so much for doing this. And please do also give us the dates for any of the activities you have listed up there because it might be something we want to help or help with or attend. So please do let us know. Through the chair, as one of those students who flew under the radar and just made my way through high school, you know, I was on the basketball team, but it wasn't very good. And six foot left handed field hockey player wasn't a good idea either. So um, I think it's great to include those students as one of them who, you know, I think I would have loved to be a part of this when I was in school. So good job. Yeah. Um, no, it's, I don't think we can ask for um, two better representatives, so I'm sure that you're an inspiration to a lot of the younger kids, and I met some of the committee members said um, to, to, to bring it right down to the elementary schools, I think is awesome. I think you're going to make a huge difference, mm -hmm. and I'm sure you know that, and I'm sure you're <laughs> enjoying what you're doing. But no great presentation, um, and yeah, we're, we couldn't be more proud of you. Dr. Grinnell. So great job, both of you. That really is um, tremendous. And I also just want to uh, emphasize, I know that both of them said this, that you know the tragic passing of Zach Ford, which really got this going, but I also want to give um, sincere thanks to the Office of Ron Tarantino Foundation, who through their funding actually has helped to supply okay. books and materials oh. at our elementary schools. So okay. that um, program, those are up and running, but I think having the high school kids the middle school kids, there's nothing more impactful for young kids is when mm -hmm. some of the older kids come down. So I think yeah. it's a great idea. Absolutely. Yeah. You guys are the, the leaders um, of tomorrow and for mm -hmm. those kids to, to see you mm -hmm. down at their level and, you know, basketball players and scholars and yeah, it's, it's a great, great thing. So thank you for what you do and we look forward to your next report. Thank Good you. luck with everything. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great job. We've got a car as long going off. Yeah, because I was sitting on my seat. Thanks, guys. Good night. Thank you very Thank much. You. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Oh, okay. I can't. Thank you both very much. Thank, Thank you. you very much. Great Thanks job. Thanks. Thank, Thank, you. Thank you. Good night. Thank you. Wow. This is exciting. <laughs> you weren't awake before. Yeah. You're awake now. This is better than the phone. Rush ring. back to the oh, phone. Oh, gosh. Okay. Hold on. Moving right along. <laughs> okay. So the next presentation that we have. Um, Mrs. Reedy is here, our Director of People Services, as well as Mrs. Querion, who is our Transition Coordinator slash Job Coach. So Mrs. Reedy is going to give a little bit of background around this, and then we're going to hear um, some of the great things that are happening um, with this position and its impact on students. Well, thank you. I'd first like to say thank you to the school committee for your support of this Transition Coordinator Job Coach position last uh, summer, I think it was when it was first brought to you. And for the past six months, we've been really able to uh, provide lots of opportunities for students, which you'll see a little bit um, about very soon. And also, I think just to note that um, under Mrs. Querion, we have had a, a really good, very good program in place before this, but now it's becoming more robust and really coming a, a into a great program. So as you'll see, the opportunities that the students will have, and we're very excited for the future for more opportunities that we'll be able to provide our students. So please enjoy. Handout that okay. I wanted that you need, um, so that you need to make reference to further into my presentation. Thank you. Oh, yeah. Thank you. But it's welcome, I guess. Thank you. You're welcome. Thank you.
Good evening. Uh, welcome and thank you for having me. Um, while I'm not new to teaching here in Auburn, um, I definitely have been new to this role. Um, and I'm truly enjoying the opportunity that um, was presented to me um, kind of by surprise last August. Um, but I've just enjoyed every minute of it and I can't believe how fast the time's been flying um, to serve as the transition coordinator job coach. So we separate um, our vocational opportunities. Um, we use the terms in-house and um, in the community. And I'm gonna first start off with our in-house vocational um, jobs, which you see listed here. So in the cafeteria each morning, um, students from <coughs> Rise and Evolve um, report to the kitchen and they have assigned tasks that they do for that particular trimester. If somebody's out, we have st um, excuse me, students that are trained to fill in so they might be able to pick up on someone's job. But um, the cafeteria staff have become very dependent on this help. Um, they do such things as wash and count fruit, put out in the bowls for lunch, they count and put out packages of dried fruits, they stock the cooler with drinks, um, they fill the cooler with crates of water, scoop fruit cups, fill napkin dispensers, they stock plasticware, they pan the trays with the buns, stock and rotate bags of chips according to the expiration dates, uh, they collect trays and run the dishwasher at lunch, the large commercial dishwasher, and they wash tables and fold laundry um, for the cafeteria staff. So here we have pictures of our students helping out to get lunch ready and stocking the cooler which is um, one of the higher level um, tasks at hand because they have to um, all go exactly in the order we have like picture diagrams on the side so they have to display everything um, the exact way that it needs to be done um, and something very exciting is um, one of our students who has been working in the cafeteria for a number of years. Um, at the beginning of February, he was um, began interning over at Swanson um, Road Intermediate School. And here Janice King, Director of Food Services, um, is seen training him. Um, we had support staff go with him for um, two weeks. And he's there on Wednesdays and Fridays. He's actually bussed from Auburn High School over to Swiss and then he um, goes back to catch his bus um, home from the high school. But he works from 7.30 to 1.30, and he does a variety of tasks over there um, at Swiss. So it's, it's really nice that we're being able to um, you know, expand beyond here, and our hope in the future um, is definitely um, to, to see more of this, to get more of our trained students as they get older going over to the other schools and um, helping out in different um, areas. Um, another in-house job is recycling. Now some of these jobs are like um, more of like an earlier level job so you might see students here from the RISE program um, helping with the recycling. This takes place twice a week and with them here is actually one of our student interns. Students at the high school, um, especially if they have an interest in education or special education, um, actually come in and they intern in the classrooms. Another task that we added this year is stocking the copier rooms um, around the building. Um, there's different areas where the paper is stocked and um, the copiers and they either use a cart to push the supplies or here two of our stronger guys are actually seen using the dolly. We also have, um, that's a misprint right there, but these um, are some clerical tasks. Um, this young lady is absolutely amazing with alphabetizing um, information and correlating things by date. She'll say, do you want it most recent on top or do you want the furthest Whoa. back? She's <laughs> phenomenal. And um, she's a freshman, so we'll have her for a while helping. With <laughs> awesome. Um, and then our next job that we've added, this is DJ Ray. For those of you who might recognize her from around town, um, she had two gigs planned in February, but she was away. 
Um, so she's not starting until March. But um, Mr. Jason Bergman has um, been assisting her in creating playlists for her peers to enjoy during all four lunches um, on Fridays twice a month. Um, in addition to selecting the music, the student will be operating the equipment, helping with the setup and breakdown, as well as making announcements. Um, this vocational opportunity, as I said, is scheduled to begin in March. So we'll let you know how that goes. So our other um, group of vocational opportunities we refer to as community-based, and thus they are out in the community. Um, one of our longtime jobs that we've had, even though it's a little bit of a distance, um, is Big Y, and I know you can just like read the list there, so then I'll just go through and itemize them with the pictures. Um, I do want to say too, though, that what makes this um, so much easier for us is the um, access that we have to Rocket One to the van. Um, it just wouldn't be possible to have all these opportunities right. without that. We are very, very fortunate. Um, I have to say too that um, the added key on my ring this year was something I never thought I would see the day. Um, but <laughs> thanks to Joe Fahey, I am comfortable driving Rocket One now. <laughs> <laughs> so that was a, a big step. <laughs> Still makes me a little sweaty, but um, <laughs> we haven't heard any bad reports, so don't worry. <laughs> yes. Um, <laughs> So um, here you can see some of our students working at um, Big Y, and when I tell you that they bake cookies, um, they don't just bake cookies. This is a start to finish process. They um, unpack the frozen cookie dough, they pan the cookies four by six. There's 24 in each pan, but they actually put the pans on the tall rack that's like this high on the wheels. Um, once it's full, they unlock the oven, roll the trays in, lock it into place, shut the large oven door, set the timer, go back to pan more cookies, filling more trays. Timer goes off, they're the ones that go and wheel the cookies out. They have a special place where they let them cool. But while we're still there um, during this like two hour opportunity on Monday mornings, um, they also then remove the cookies, package them by two dozen, you know, those plastic containers, go over to the computer and they look up the codes and they print out the labels that go on there peel them off, close them up, and then take the cart and bring them out into the store and display them for sale. Mm -hmm. So this is truly start to finish. So it's, it's a great opportunity. Um, another job that we've added is coming out here to the school department. And um, you might notice, not tonight exactly, but it's, <laughs> we're still a little in between seasons here. Um, but seasonally, they um, do the planters on the steps. Um, they'll sweep the steps in the fall and just, you know, tidy up that front area. And um, also, in addition to taking care of the planters, um, when they're out here on Monday afternoons, they vacuum the hallways, they do the recycling, um, some light cleaning, they clean the windows in the two entryways. And then every other Wednesday, um, they come out and um, they actually are seen here they try fold the paychecks for the whole school system and stuff them in the envelopes, keeping them in alphabetical order and um, keeping them sorted by school. Wow. So they, um, they're doing a great job with that too. Question if I may. When Certainly. we see the people doing like the baking and then this one, it, is that the people that do it all the time or do you rotate the kids through different jobs? It's an excellent question. So they hold a job unless we find a reason why it's, it's just not a good match. Mm -hmm. But they hold the job for at least one trimester. Oh. They could actually stay on that job um, all three trimesters, a couple of years, but there is always the opportunity that's going to get changed up the next trimester. Um, and this is due to either their schedules um, based around classes, if they're still taking classes, or if they're receiving um, therapies, different services, mm -hmm. um, and also um, just to give everyone equal opportunities for the different jobs. Okay. So, well, thank you. Um, another uh, new business partnership that we have this year is with Dialed in Nutrition, which is located next to Weep and Willie's in Drury Square. Um, it's known, the kids all call it the Shake Shop, mm -hmm. and. Um, Clay Baker has welcomed us into um, one of his branches here, 
and this young lady is a greeter. You see her also with the support staff. So if you're there on Monday or Wednesday mornings, she is the first smiling face that you see and she welcomes you in. Um, when she has some downtime, she also sorts and um, stocks some of the product. Another um, business that we added um, that's worked out great is Masterman's, which is located right here in Auburn. Um, they've given us a huge warm welcome. Um, we are here two mornings a week. Um, there's four different students that have benefited from um, this new vocational um, site. And um, what they do is they assemble boxes of different sizes and then push the big the carts and bring them over and they have to sort them by size. And there's a very strategic way that they're using the packing tape to make them strong enough. And then, I don't have pictures of it, but there's another task um, where they pack um, they have these small brown bags, and I guess this started actually with Mr. Masterman back in the 60s, and they put two Tootsie Pops, they have to be two different colors, crisscrossed into the brown bag, it's folded over, and then they have a seal that they put on it, and that goes in every single box that is shipped out from Masterman's. So that's another task wow. that the students do, and they fill just boxes and boxes of them. Mm -hmm. so. Um, this has been a very popular um, vocational spot. Uh, Mr. Drapo has welcomed us in for years now. Um, the kids go over to, I should say, the young adults go over to the Horgan Skating Rink where they clean the locker rooms, they um, wipe down benches, they mop floors, they vacuum the lobby, they wipe down all the vending machines. Um, we also have a student that sharpens skates weekly there too and their reward is that they get to go out on the ice if they want when they're done oh. and um, they also Mr. Drago has hidden change around the locker rooms <laughs> and um, as they're cleaning if they're really good at cleaning they find the change in all kinds of hidden spots Aww. and then they can buy themselves a snack from the vending machine Aww. Aww. So, um, that's, that's a really that's a good incentive it's nice. a big deal I'm sure <laughs> big deal <laughs> I bet um, on Thursdays, we're out at Park and Shop here in Auburn, um, a variety of tasks. Um, we take care of the um, cat and dog food aisle, and um, the students unpack the um, shipments, and they um, match the SKU numbers. So some of our students who that might be easier for them to do, they actually find exactly where, never knew there were so many kinds of cat food but it, they match the SKU number and then you have to rotate the product so they take the old off put the new back um, and rotate all the dates and then they face the shells um, we also rotate um, getting to go up front and learning how to back so that's another great um, opportunity and I want to um, note here too um, the students have vocational shirts this year um, which we're very grateful for. So it's their uniform. Um, they show up out front, get on the van, and they're dressed for work, ready to go. So um, the, everyone looks very neat, and it just says Auburn High School. Oh. So it's, it's a very nice representation. And they also wash, dry, and fold their own work shirts. Hmm. One day a week, we volunteer at St. Vincent's Hospital. Um, our main duty is um, going down into the basement and getting the mail cart and we push the cart um, to all the different floors and deliver the mail to the different um, doctor's offices and um, they also deliver newspapers but that's pretty much um, that takes up the bulk of the morning they earn a lunch while they're there in the cafeteria which they love and then um, we sometimes will also correlate patient folders with all the different forms Auburn Town Pizza has also welcomed us where students uh, fold pizza boxes in preparation and stack them up and we also have some students who um, clean the tables and fill the condiments, all the containers. So in addition to um, the different vocational sites, a couple of the other things um, that I've worked on but first I just one last thing I wanted to say before I wrap that up was um, so looking at it all together thus far this year we have a total of 18 students freshmen through post-graduate 
that benefit from these 12, 12 vocational sites. Currently, I'm in contact with and hopefully to potentially add an additional 10 to 12 vocational sites here within the urban community for the 2021 school year. The variety of sites ensures a vast amount of skills and potential opportunities for future employment for our young adults. Um, and this is an increase in six new vocational sites from last year and an increase in student involvement by about eight, eight to nine students um, since last year. And this is also in part um, because in this new role we've also been able to um, add some more students and include them that weren't just in the RISE or the Evolve program. So some of our other students who are mainstreamed have also been able to jump in and um, benefit from this vocational program. So some of the other things that um, we've worked on, and you might want to make reference to your packet now. Um, this is just a um, snapshot of what a vocational schedule looks like for a trimester. So this is try to. Um, you can ignore the blue. That was we weren't sure about adding that second day, but it did get added. Um, but this will actually be changing in March as we go to try three. But this is actually what it looks like. You can see what the staffing is like with um, the support staff that accompanies them as well and the time frame that they're at the jobs. Um, another thing that I added this year was um, student data collection. So every time they go to a job, whether it be in-house or out in the community, um, staff that works closely with them fills out this side of the form. Um, it, it goes pretty quick. We have clipboards for each job site. It's not really that cumbersome. And they actually, um, staff had a say. We all put this together, um, noting what we thought was most important and what would be the easiest way to um, share the information. But what I especially like on the back is, um, and it is double-sided. I just did it this way easier to make it easier for you. But the students, um, and it's differentiated here. So. Um, maybe a student that's like nonverbal and is going to, you know, start writing. They just give the thumbs up or the thumbs down to how they thought they did. But then, as it goes on, some students, you know, will write about what they really liked about it, what their strengths were, how they could improve. And then we always ask, would you like to work here in the future? So um, this is great that data collection. Um, we're also very excited about um, this edition. Um, it's currently in the works. Um, we're adding digital portfolios. So for every student um, in grades, for now, grades 9 through 12, um, what used to be their record with their notes from IEP meetings, um, a variety of assessments, um, all of that information would be in a folder in a filing cabinet. It's now going to be all online. Um, they're actually going to have that same folder, but it'll just be digital. And um, if you take a close look at this, um, it's all the necessary pieces for a full transition from 14 to 18 or 14 to 22. So after each um, IEP meeting or after an activity is done, um, the team chair is actually able to check it off and then information is scanned and actually placed in this digital portfolio. So we probably, we have a small number of them um, actually entered thus far. Tuesday we actually have um, professional development in that department's working on this further with um, someone from ABC who's come out and been guiding us through this process. And I'll be mentioning her again in a minute. Um, we've added another driver in addition to myself, another trained driver, so that really helps to make this um, vocational schedule work. Um, we, you, we share one van, but we've gotten really um, creative in dropping groups off, having another group continue on to another job site. So oftentimes we're running two job sites or three even um, simultaneously, which is great. So it gets a lot more people out into the community. Um, and just pretty much wrapping it up. Um, other things I've done is I will attend IEP meetings um, if it's requested. Um, I'm working with the students for transition assessments, um, which include um, vocational interests, you know, career interest surveys, um, self-advocacy assessments, uh, independent living skills. Um, then I prepare their reports, the formal report, and share them at the team meetings. I've also been meeting regularly with, um, and this is a part of the job that I'm 
really, really enjoying um, is working with the people from the different um, local services um, to make the connections with the parents and with the students and to get them the help, the assistance that they need. We recently have um, a family who is just very overwhelmed by the guardianship process. And um, so we were able to call upon um, DDS and to have their caseworker come in and we're sitting down and meeting with them and they're walking them through the paperwork and through the process. Um, we have another parent who was in just the other day. We met with their caseworker, um, very overwhelmed about summer and you know what to do you know, with her loved one. And they just share so many um, resources and different programs that are available. Um, we also work with them um, when it's time to transition a student either into the workforce, into adult services, um, into a day hab, or wherever it is that we're go they're going. Each situation is obviously individual, um, but it's just been great working with them. Um, I've attended two transition fairs that I knew about, and I'm also part of the Shrewsbury Interagency Transition um, Group, which is um, transition coordinators and special ed staff from all over Worcester County that get together twice a year. And we just share what's going on in our school systems, um, brainstorm, share ideas. Um, also, as part of the um, three-year eval for the assessments, there is a component that I've added um, that actually goes home to the parents. And I have to say I've had a 95% return rate on these. Mm -hmm. And um, it just really fills in that gap with what goes on at home, because we see the student at school. We see them out in the community. But just knowing that other piece, more than just, you know, small conversation. Um, the parents have been very receptive to this. That's also a part that's being um, put into their digital portfolio. Um, through meeting all of these people with the different local agencies and um, attending the different um, transition fairs, I've collected a lot of information, a lot of flyers, a lot of resources. So I've created a binder that's in my office. Um, staff has borrowed it. Parents have looked at it. Students come in and look at it. Um, I'm trying to keep that up, updated and running. Um, what's been instrumental in um, jumping into this new position um, is the uh, staff development that has been provided for me, which I'm extremely grateful for. Um, Mary Sharma, who is from the Assabet Valley Collaborative, has been working with me as my mentor. She first met with me weekly in the beginning. Um, we've now eased into like once a month. She also does staff development with our department. Um, but she helped me with the report writing and with the different assessments I should use and with schedule. You know, she was always just a text away if I had a question, a phone call. Um, she's been fabulous. I don't know what I would have done without her. Um, it's also nice to be able to consult with the students and not just, as I said, the students that I was used to working with in Rise and Evolve, but um, other students in the school who want to come in and talk to me about, you know, maybe vocational plans. Maybe they're not on the, um, the college route. Um, and it's, I'm located right off the library and the door is always open when I am in the building. Um, so I'm really establishing a nice rapport. And I just, I want to say thank you. It's a lot to go over. I was trying to go through it quick, um, but we're doing a lot of things and I'm very excited about it. Um, if there was, is anything that wasn't that clear, if you have questions or anything you want to ask or add? Yes? Wendy, do the students receive any money for any of the work they do? What's funny is most of the job sites, that's the first thing they ask and they want to do it. And I say, no, 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 no. This is training. This is vocational training. Um, so we're very grateful for that experience. Um, what I found is different job sites just kind of do their own thing if they choose to. So um, when we were at Park and Shop earlier in the day, we're there later in the afternoon now, but they used to let the kids go and order a grinder at the deli. Mm -hmm. and get some chips and a drink and that was huge you know <laughs> so they, they earned their lunch um st v's they give them a meal ticket um i know masterman's um next monday has gift cards for them they just mm -hmm. want to say thank you um for this first half of the year um big wide bakery oftentimes makes gift bags for the kids at christmas just to say thank you but very personal you know like they'll know that they have a favorite movie or a favorite character or um, so it's nice. The, um, the community really gets to know 
the individual students, and they're well, very receptive. Well, that's good, because many people judge their appreciation by their paychecks, so I was wondering what they did for the children. Mm -hmm. um, I, I think they feel appreciated. Good. Um, that's the sense that I'm getting. That's also the sense that the staff is getting. Good. Because that certainly would, would concern me if it wasn't received that yeah. way. Great. Thank you. So, question yes. uh, through the chair. What do we do during the summer? Do we have anything? Do you keep the, these skills fresh for them? Or? We were just having that conversation earlier this week. Um, in the past, we've had extended school year, um, which we, um, you know, kids would come in and work on a lot of their skills, maybe do some in house vocational tasks, whatever school we were located at. But there was no um, job coach or transitional coordinator or anything in the summer. Um, I have taught ESY before, so we're looking at different ways that maybe we can carry over um, some of this into the summer. They're only with us for about two and a half hours, three hours in the morning, um, but it's in the, the beginning stages right now. Okay. Yeah. Great question, though. We could do to help out with that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. It's great. Well, thank you. Thank yeah. you. Through the chair, I'm just really, really impressed and grateful. I'm just so grateful for you, you guys all working so hard to put this together and really giving our kids a solid footing. Well, we're very grateful for the support, um, and I wanted to say that too. I want to thank all the administrators and all the support that we've gotten them. Um, ever since I left art and came to special ed and worked with this population, the support is great. Um, all of our ideas and things that we've wanted to do. Um, have always been very, very well supported, well received. So, thank you. We couldn't do it without that. Oh, well, thank you. So, and um, just one more thing for the chair. I do like that you looped in that you are still open to giving some of those opportunities to some of the kids that might have already transitioned back into mainstream. Mm -hmm. Because you know, I, I think that's important too for you know for them to because maybe they're not going to be ready for the full college experience, right. even full community college, but they know that they can still go back. And have that and as so a touch these point. students, so I, I do really like that. Right. So a lot of those students are students that might be on an IEP or might be like on a 504, but they, um, yeah, don't just don't fit into that mold. And now I have, I haven't been able obviously to get to all of them, but I'd probably say I've had the opportunity to maybe work with a dozen or so so far, and that's still 12 more that mm -hmm. you know I wasn't able yeah. to work with last year. So um, guidance does a great job too. But this is just one other avenue, and after attending, um, you know, a team meeting or three-year eval, I can actually work with the student, work with the parents, and say, well, let's find out what their interests are, and let's see if we can make, um, you know, some connections and help. So, it's um, a work in progress. But thank you for the opportunity. Yeah. Thank, you. thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Great presentation. Thank you. All right. <coughs> So the next item that comes before you annually is the program of studies. Um, Mr. Hanfield and his team review it, and in your packet is actually the overview of the changes. So it is my recommendation that you approve those, and they will then embed them into the document and get those out for schedules to be made. Sounds great. And good evening. How is everyone tonight? Good evening. Just um, real quick, as Dr. Brunel said, um, program studies is before you um, and recommended changes. Just quickly hit the highlights um, uh, from a curriculum standpoint. Social studies uh, curriculum sequence is changing uh, per the state, and so uh, rather than um, students <coughs> having world history as freshmen, US uh, 1 as 10th graders and US 2 as 11th graders. It's now shifted to where US 1 is in grade 9, US 2 is in grade 10, and world history is in um, grade 11. Um, the competency determinations for the class of 2024 on MCAS, the scoring metric has changed. So I know that a lot of people are used to that 220 to 280 uh, scoring metric. Um, that's been changed uh, to something, and forgive me for not knowing exactly, because uh, it's new for us, but it's somewhere it, like a four to 800 metric. Um, but that's all spelled out in the program of studies. Um, also new, and this is I believe part of our, no actually I know this is part of our strategic plan. Um, class of 2024 um, will be required to um, have 10 hours of um, community service every year, 40 total over the course of the four years. Um, 
we feel that our kids should be able to, uh, to handle that through the 365Z work that we do within the building and other opportunities that are provided through, you know, athletics, NHS, student council, things of that nature. Um, so that was, that's an ad uh, in there as well. We did clarify language um, from earlier this school year on dual enrollment and uh, mm. made that much more clear um, in terms of being uh, put into GPAs. And then um, we added language for the seal of biliteracy opportunity that's offered through DESI and then our BRIGHT program, uh, which you've heard about um, throughout the year. We officially added that language uh, to the program of studies as well. So those are the highlights there. I mean, obviously there are the little small tweaks, but they're not substantive changes. Um, but that's that's it for 2021. 20, Any questions or comments? I just have one, and forgive me if this is an ignorant <coughs> question. No, it's fine. What happens with the kids that have already done uh, that have already done world history, and then they're back in 11th? So how do we deal so with the kids caught in the middle? Yeah, so we're fa so basically we're phasing in. So we're not going to see world history at AHS for a couple of years because all of our kids will be kind of phased into U.S. history. Mm -hmm. So. Um, Starting with our, so we'll coming with this incoming freshman class will be US 1. The kids in world history will move in grade 10 to US 1. There'll be some overlap in terms of grades at some point over the next few years. You know, you might have ninth and 10th graders together, mm -hmm. um, you know, to, to satisfy that requirement, but, um, but we'll work through that. Okay. So just wondering yeah. if they had to yep. duplicate. Certainly. Yeah, I, no, I mean, it just it just changes our sections, um, you know, section of section offerings. Uh, like I said, what would what would have been world history now becomes U.S. So okay. um, it'll switch back in in uh, two years. Okay. We'll be into that U.S. one, U.S. two world model. To the chair, do you know the reason why the state changed? So the state frameworks that were due for a, a revision. Um, they were first adopted, I want to say, in 2002. And as part of the state's, um, you know, kind of recurring um, uh, revision and review of, of curriculum standards, um, social studies was was due. So um, it, it was a wholesale change, um, you know, kind of K to 12. The high school piece was obviously the last part because you've got to put the K to 8 pieces in first. So um, it was really just more of a, just a curriculum revision. Okay. Casey, I was just wondering, how are they going to keep track of their 40 hours of community service? So is there going to be a form? Yes. Yeah, so well, so one of the things that, that my son wasn't necessarily, I think, as clear as he could have been with you, um, probably because he was nervous, uh, was that, so within that 365Z, they were talking about our, the home bases. And so um, we've got, uh, let's see, ten, we've got about 40 home bases. There's about 10 per grade. And there's two students um, that come down out of those, so there's, you know, 50 to 60, 70, 80 kids in the 365Z group. Long story short, those so those home-based teachers are going to be responsible for the tracking of those hours. So they'll be responsible for tracking their home-based kids' hours. Um, and like I said, you really, you have to try hard not to hit that 40-hour mark over four years. Many of our kids, you know, we were just thinking about this last week, um, many of our kids that will far exceed those 40 hours, and many of them, the majority of them do now in their different activities, but um, you know, to get all of our kids kind of around this idea of service, um, that's how it'll be tracked. And will outside activities like with scouting or anything count sure, towards Sure, absolutely. Oh, yep, good. absolutely. Yep, without question. Yep. Excellent. Yeah, we just wanted to put together, um, you know, when we do an initi any initiative like this, we just want to make sure that it is a, is a safety net, you know, right, for those kids who maybe aren't in scouts or aren't in whatever. Mm -hmm. um, so they'll be able to, to obtain those hours within the building if necessary, but the majority will far exceed it. Great. Any other comments or questions? All right. Mm -hmm. I would entertain a motion to approve. I'll make that motion to approve the program of studies for Auburn High School for the 2020-2021 school year. Second. All in favor? Aye. Aye. All right, this is vote. All right, thank you very much. Thank you. Great. Thanks. Good night. Thank you, Good night. Guys. Thank you, guys. Good night. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Right, moving on. Okay, so the next item we have two out of state field trips. The first one um, actually is a request for April of 2021. 
so about 13 months away and it is the biannual trip that they take to Paris. As noted in the superintendent's memo, the reason is to give kids an ample amount of time to raise funds, but also if they book the trip by March of 2020, um, there are some scholarships available. I would say to you, as, as these trips have happened in the past, obviously it will be incumbent upon um, Mr. Hanfield and Dr. Chamberlain and yourselves to watch the travel advisories sure. um, you know, as the date approaches. Yeah. But it is my recommendation that you approve it at this time. I would entertain that motion. Make a motion to approve the AHS field trip to France in April of 2021. And I'll second that. Any further discussion? Yeah, through the chair. I saw the video from Quebec trip, mm -hmm. and it was just amazing yeah. the stuff these kids get yeah. to experience. So. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's great. Yeah, Mrs. Verdella goes above and beyond, mm -hmm. definitely. She does. She does. All in favor? Aye. 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 Ms. Boat. The next trip um, is much closer to home and it is taking place this year. Um, it's for the AP US history students to visit um, Rhode Island to see the Newport um, the mansions. It is my recommendation that you approve that as well. I would entertain that motion. Make a motion to approve the trip to the Breakers in Newport, Rhode Island. Second. Any discussion? Have fun. Yeah. Mm -hmm. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 The next item um, is really great news to share with you, something that we monitor regularly, the 2018-2019 dropout data that we just recently were, uh, was just released from DESE is um, eight tenths of one percent. Um, obviously, we want it to be zero, but I want to thank everybody up at the high school and across the district that really work um, in collaborative fashion to make sure that our kids leave with a high school diploma and those who sometimes leave early to try and get them to come back and complete um, coursework. So I think it's a great indicator. The next item, just wanted to make you aware, I know I've shared in the past about the Humanities Scholars Program. Uh, their final program will actually take place um, on April 2nd upcoming at Worcester State and it travels amongst different um, colleges in the area. So I had the opportunity to go to a portion of the event at Clark University. And it was all about the environment in U.S. Um, and I will tell you the thanks certainly to Mr. Dupour and Mr. Martin, high school English teachers, but each college provides their own professors who actually give a talk and then students have the opportunity to ask questions and it's really a great uh, piece. So there were three individuals, three professors um, from Clark who presented on really very, very interesting topics and kids from area schools who participate in the program get the opportunity to ask questions and uh, really a very scholarly, great program. So I wanted to make you aware of that too. The next item is the calendar for next school year. So with your guidance, um, with reviewing it with leadership team and Dr. Chamberlain and I shared it with the Auburn Education Association, this is the calendar that we are recommending to you. It maintains the February and April vacations as well as the December break. It's very, very much in keeping with this year's. The one change that I would say to you is, and this was after consultation with um, Deb Greenville, Town Clerk, yeah. as well as Mr. Hanfield and Dr. Chamberlain, that we will, instead of having a PD day on October 9th, that it instead will be on November 3rd, the date of the presidential election, which is anticipated as was the case in 2016, to have um, a pretty busy day. So that way students are home that day. Yeah, it's not the parking lot. A, polling, mm -hmm. uh, a polling station, exactly. So it is my recommendation that you approve that. I would entertain that motion. Make a motion to approve the calendar for the 2020-2021 school year as presented. And I'll second that. Any discussion? Thanks for working with the AEA mm -hmm. to make sure mm -hmm. we're on the same page. Well. All right, all in favor? Aye. 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 This is a vote. The next item, um, and you have the updates for the five overarching goal areas of the strategic plan. I, I just want to first start off by thanking those individuals who came back yet again um, to make these updates uh, that were done in, in January. And also what we did in each group really tried to target one or perhaps two areas on which to focus uh, upcoming. It's tremendous, the progress that has been made and continues to be made on these. And I think what's what's most notable is it's not only the people who come to those meetings, but it really 
um, spans back in the schools as well. But I think it just breathed life into what it was, those 140 plus school community and student representatives said they really wanted for the Auckland Public Schools. So we continue to, to stay on track and, and I would dare say probably even be a bit ahead of schedule. So um, a, a great job and we will, after you approve those, we will get those posted on the website for the community to see or anyone else who may be interested. Great. I would entertain that motion. Make a motion to approve the January updates to the strategic plan. Second. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. None. All in favor? Aye. Aye. Looks like we're in good shape. Huh? Yeah. yeah definitely. <laughs> Very good shape, yes. So the next item is, um, as you know, last school year, and with the support of, of yourselves, the Finance Committee and Board of Selectmen, a special education stabilization two years ago um, fund was established. And this, we put monies into there to be used for unanticipated and unbudgeted special education needs. So I come before you this evening with a request to use funds from that um, special education stabilization um, pot in the amount of $81,700.36. So uh, unable to go into great detail around this, what I can share with you is currently um, exclusive of any interest earnings. In that account, there is $351,540.04. So this will obviously take them out of there, but it's for the exact reason that it was placed in there. And really it is to address uh, extended evaluations that really all center around safety concerns. So it is my recommendation that you approve this and then be reminded um, that once approved, this would then need to go to the Board of Selectmen for their approval as well. But Dr. Chamberlain and I did meet with Town Manager Jacobson and CFO Kazanovich, and both of them were in full support of this, the use of these funds. Great. I would entertain that motion. Make a motion to approve the request use of funds in the Special Education Stabilization Fund in the amount of $81,736 to address the changing student needs related to safety. Second. Any discussion? So is this to protect the students and students around those students? I forgot what we had said. So yes, yeah, so really um, issues had arisen with particular students that uh, we need to get some more information about them um, and how to keep them safe and those around them safe. Oh, okay. Yes. yes. Yeah, now it's exactly. done to come back to yeah. me. Thank you. Any other questions or comments? I'm thankful that uh, this stabilization fund was put in place. Yeah. 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 All in favor? Aye. 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 This is a vote. And then the next item I wanted to share with you mm -hmm. that Mrs. King, our Director of Food Services, received two donations toward defraying the cost of student lunch debt. So um, the two were from one from was uh, from Ms. Donna Bacon in the amount of $50, and the second one was from Mr. James McGlynn um, in the amount of $197. So it is my recommendation that you accept both of those with appreciation. I would entertain that motion. Make a motion to accept the donation from Ms. Donna Bacon in the amount of $50 and the donation from Mr. James McGlynn in the amount of $197 towards defraying the cost of student lunch debt. Second. Any discussion? Thank Question, you. does that go into a general fund or does it target specific school debt? So it, how does that work? I'm sorry, through the chair. Um, depending if the donors requested that it go to a specific school or even students that could happen. Sure. Both of these came forward as just general donations, so Mrs. King will utilize those, <clears throat> likely to defray some of the costs of the larger um, bills that are out there and things. Okay. And I will say that over the years, we've had a number of different individuals who have come forward, and it's always much appreciated. If you remember several years ago, mm. the bus drivers um, took, took up a collection. collection. I think yeah. it may have been around the holidays to defray these costs. So some of our families, um, and, and Mrs. King is great about reaching out and encouraging them to sign up or see if they qualify for free or reduced lunch and things. But our lunch debt is maintained at, a, at a, an appropriate level. Some area communities struggle mightily with it in the tens of thousands, so we're nowhere near that. So if we wanted to just give <coughs> the donation, mm -hmm. we could just give it to the general 
lunched at, and it would be put where it needs to be used? Correct. Okay. Correct. Correct. Yes. Yeah. Thank you to the Do we people. know roughly what that number is? Not exactly. The debt? Yeah. Is it right around a thousand? Yeah, so annually it turns out to be about a thousand dollars, sometimes eight hundred or so over the end of the year. Yeah. Okay. Great. Any other comments or questions? Well, that was very nice of them. Mm. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 There's a vote. We now move on to unfinished business. So I wanted to bring back to you, I had brought forward to Mr. Brigetti um, the questions that you had asked about. This is, this, if you recall, is in connection with the AT&T cell tower. Um, potential proposal to be placed at the Swanson Road property. So I included the questions and um, the responses and really bring it forward to you for you to decide um, what you would like me to do with this next if you want me to continue um, to pursue it. It would, as I think I shared with you back when it first came forward, it would require, I'd have to work closely with Town Manager Jacobson, um, but would likely require Town Meeting approval. I know it would have to go out to bid. I know that um, a comment was made last time that you would want to make sure that parents of students there would have an opportunity to weigh in too, but just really looking for you, from you, where you'd like me to go next with this. Through the chair, if I can be candid, I don't like the idea of putting it on a property period mm -hmm. for all the reasons we discussed, but I'm one of the many that get to weigh into that discussion. So. I would want to hear what parents say and right. kind of base my decision on that, I think. <laughs> Any other comments or questions? Well, I read through it and they seem to say it's not a safety concern for our students. Mm -hmm. but. Like you said, Jesse, I'd like to know what the parents would think because it'd be their children. It'll be there. Mm -hmm. um, I know they want to pay us money to use our land. Mm -hmm. um, I wouldn't want it in the front of the building. I don't know where they're talking about putting it, but mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. I just wouldn't want to push forward and have it done and then the community is sure. you know up in arms over it mm -hmm. they didn't know it was coming and right yeah. and through the chair i'm concerned about precedent frankly you know how much do we start just parceling off pieces of our you know land that we might you need to use at some point to expand for you know um i, I just worry about the precedent that it was a i'm sorry how much was it that it was going to bring in i don't know what it said um, through the chair, I don't have that information in front of me, but I think it was in the vicinity of about two thousand dollars a month or somewhere in there. I don't know if you remember Mrs. Yeah, yeah. I can get that information for you. But um, through the chair, hearing your concerns, we can look to try and get some information and some input, I guess, um, from the parents of the students at that school. Um, through the chair, do any other schools do this in the area that we've heard of? So. The photos that we brought forward to you, I think, was of um, Northborough Town Hall that had it and um, maybe one other facility, um, I forget. So but not that I'm aware of, but I can certainly schools, ask yeah, and find that out, too. Yeah. And did they say why specifically they wanted that piece of land? Um, central? It, it, it is central. I think it, it sits up a bit high. The original request came through that it really was to help with some of the safety communications. Um, so those were the original reasons, I think. That the the 911 calls on cell phones would go through better. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, would, I would say, you know, we have other bits of land that you can mm -hmm. put a tower on that. Yeah, is Mary D is wide open. Exactly. That's yeah. actually a five parcels that they didn't even, I don't think they actually sold all the par parcels to the development of that. Then new companies taken over. So, so mm. I would say well, look out. <laughs> is this something that we want to continue to explore and survey parents, or is this something that we want to just say no? Yeah. Right now, mm. based on the $2,000 per month oh, approximately. They say shut it down, but I, I, I mean, I, I agree. But well, if there's no um, really? motion made, then mm -hmm. I guess it, it, it would be dead in the water. Mm -hmm. Is that where we're at? Mm -hmm. yeah. Good. Um, Go either way. I mean, yeah, I don't really see the need for 
put one of those things on a school in a schoolyard. Mm -hmm. I mean, it, they're talking solar panels on the roof to help us get electricity for the school or something, but it doesn't seem like it's going to benefit the school in any way, other than the two thousand dollars. But would mm -hmm. you like a motion, Dr. Brunel, to? Um, Yes, I, I think that would make sense. And then I would relay that um, to this gentleman and also to town manager Jacobson because there could very well be other parcels of land in yeah. town if this is a desire for the town hall or something. Right. <laughs> I don't want it at Bryn Mawr either. So right. tell him not right. well, Oh, I would. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, no. I'm taking this to mean to the chair that right. this is a decision oh. to not have school on a school property. property. Right. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah. So that probably should be your motion. That'll be the motion. Yes. Okay. okay. I would entertain a motion um, not to put this tower on school property. Second. I'll, I'll make that motion. Uh, you mean, okay. I'll second it. Do I have a second? <laughs> a second. And we have a second. Any further discussion? I think if other towns aren't doing it on schools, mm. like, I'm just thinking a kid kicking a, a ball, like all of a sudden they can't be out there kicking balls at recess. And mm. I don't, yeah. It's coming down the road. It, it's mm. a radius of space. Mm -hmm. you know, kids climbing. Yeah. Well, those opinions are very clear. <laughs> All in favor? Aye. 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 There's a vote. But thank you, Mary Ellen, for yeah. oh, this is like a lot more work on your part. So just that. Yeah. No problem at all. Truly. There's other hills in town. There's other hills in town. Yeah. Thank you. There's lots of hills in town. It's true. All right. Moving on. So the FY21 draft budget, as I noted in the packet, so I recently um, had conversations uh, we had with CFO Kazanovich, and he shared uh, on February 5th that they would be recommending a budget increase of 2.75 percent to the school department with the aggregate of town departments getting that same um, level. So I've worked with um, the leadership team and met as recently um, as yesterday around this topic and previously had met with Mr. Hanfield and um, Dr. Chamberlain. So we have a number of cuts that we have proposed, I will bring them forward to you on March 11th. I would say to you that we are currently at a 2.96% um, increase. It does add some monies oh. in to address the Student Opportunity Act. It adds in, um, it returns to positions, um, support staff positions to the district um, that we had cut in the first round. So if you remember, it was originally a 3.34%. Um, but the one position that has um, been eliminated, if you recall back in November, the only position that came forward in the budget new position was a .6 strings teacher. And that was to continue the program at uh, the middle school during the school day. So that has been eliminated from um, this budget. But working through um, the two fine arts direct, the co-fine arts directors, as well as Mr. Desto and, and Dr. Lopez, it would continue as a beyond the school day program. And if you recall, you have approved a partnership with the Worcester Youth Orchestra, mm -hmm. who utilizes and rents our facility at a reduced rate with the understanding that Auburn students, they have scholarships to get in. So but if this were to go forward, we would bring that forward to the Worcester Youth Orchestra and ask that there be more involved. Mm -hmm. um, I will say the program continues to thrive at grades three, four, five, and that is a beyond the school day program there. Um, obviously, the older children get the more opportunities they have be it for beyond the school day, whether it's athletics, clubs, and the like and things. So what we hope, though, is that students who really are interested in it and have been taking strings for three years would continue to do it beyond the school day and through Worcester Youth Orchestra. Mm -hmm. uh, but we will bring those documents to you. Um, because we really want to give a little bit more time, quite honestly, in the hopes that more monies will come our way from the House. Um, it's probably a bit early to, to anticipate that happening, but would have you vote on uh, March 11th to um, approve or not approve the reductions further made. What I will say is I shared, and, and I think all of the leadership team uh, agreed, including Mr. Hanfield, uh, Mr. Hanfield, Field, I don't know why I can't say his name, <laughs> Superintendent-elect, um, that it really does the same 
thing that we've tried to do for 12 years, which is protect kids in classrooms. Um, and, and we have, I think, done a, an exemplary job of doing that. But I don't know that we'll get to 2.75, quite honestly. So we're at 2.9. 2.96, yes. Yeah, I, I was misreading that and thinking, what's the problem? Yeah. I thought they were giving us more money. They're not. They're oh, yeah, giving no. us less. <laughs> and then through the chair, if you actually, if, if you have it, what's the dollar amount of that 0.6? Strengths so, and structure. Um, it, well, what we did is it's about $29,000 was the dollar amount for the 0.6 strings teacher. We removed, we left about $5,000 in the budget to allow for the stipend for that's beyond the school day. Okay. So that, that's still in. We didn't, okay. we didn't wipe it entirely. Okay, yeah. great. Yeah. Okay, thank you. Like, yeah, absolutely. Through the chair, my daughter does the strings at Swiss, and mm. it's the end of the day. Mm. Some kids do it at the start of the day, mm. but it seems to be working great. Mm. I mean, mm. she it's fresh in her mind when she gets home, and mm. she is supposed to be practicing, but she doesn't. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, it hasn't been a problem. So. Yeah, good. Good. Any other comments, questions? Through the chair, um, if we. Do you see pushback if we're at 2.9? Are they going to really be pushing for that 2.75? You know, I, I think that um, I will certainly continue to have ongoing discussions as we do with um, the town manager and CFO about this issue. So, you know, I mean, I think it's fair to say that they wish the overall amount was higher, um, probably for the town and the schools, but sure. they're trying to work within guidelines and guidance and, yeah. and some un unanticipated potential costs. Right. So, um, but I'm hoping we get more money from the house and then it's a non-issue, so yeah. we'll see. Okay. <laughs> I will keep you, I'll have more information in March 11th. Okay. Thank you. So we won't vote on anything then tonight. Correct. That would be my recommendation, I would say, through the chair. Sounds good. Yep. Moving on. So the, speaking about budget, we originally had set back last year the public hearing to be March 25th. It is my recommendation that we change that to April 8th. That way, when you vote a number on March 11th, we will mail out to town meeting members as we have an invitation to the public hearing. And um, just as was the case last year, although many of us had amnesia about it, <laughs> the Auburn High School, the Little Mermaid, is um, having their final practice tech week of March 23rd. So that's no longer an issue if we go to April 8th, but if you'll recall, we actually had our public hearing here yeah. in the school committee room. See, you didn't have any issue. We did, though. Um, so it's up to you where to hold it and also at what time. But it is my recommendation that we put it off to April 8th. Um, and that still gives us ample time prior to town meeting. My recollection was there were less than five people in the audience. Right. Yeah. Correct. Yeah. More like two, but. I think mm -hmm. there were two. Mm -hmm. yeah. There's usually yeah. only one or two. Right. So if that's the case, do it here. Mm -hmm. I agree. It certainly saves um, having an extra person from site management or anything mm -hmm. in the high school if they don't mm -hmm. have to be there. Mm -hmm. It's warmer here. Right. <laughs> yes. Oh, yes. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Jesse's got to stay warm when she's spending money. <laughs> <laughs> I would have to and so what was the date again that we're looking at? April 8th. April 8th. And then you need to determine the time, and then it sounds like you're saying here in the school committee room. Yeah. Um, okay. Through the chair, I would say do it early if we can, just to give, a, a, you know, not make it a very late night for all of our administrators, if that works for you. Do a 6 p.m. 6 p.m. As long as, yeah, 6 p.m. is good. So if town meeting members want to come, mm -hmm. then they work. That's probably good. Okay, I would entertain that motion. So hold the public hearing on April 8th at 6 p.m. here in the um, school committee room. I'll make that motion. And I'll second it. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Ms. Vogue. So are we still going to meet um, our regular meeting in March, or? To the chair, we are scheduled for a meeting on March 11th and March 25th. April 8th would be the next school committee regularly scheduled anyway after that. So we will still meet on the 11th and 25th. Okay. I yes. In your packet is the proposed warrant articles, I think, Mrs. Worsbicki, for putting them together. Um, the Medicaid receipts, the information about the um, the trust for the gym are ones that are always in there. The McKinney Vinto, um, the homeless transportation one, those are pretty standard ones. Um, the one that is new is seeking 
approval at town meeting to enter into an MOU. So basically what it is saying, uh, and I may ask Mrs. Worsbicki to, to fill in, but basically the Department of Children and Families and the Executive Office of Health and Human Services in DESE, in order for us to be able to get federal Title IV um, e monies to get reimbursed for when we transport students, children who are in foster care, we need to have this as a new requirement <clears throat> to have this. And that way the money would come to us without further appropriation required. So it really is just seeking approval so that it comes directly to the school district. And, and it would be in reimbursement for monies that we've spent already. And the amounts, I will say to you, will be filled in. Um, we typically send these to um, the town council. They review through them. Um, and then once we know, like for the, the trust, we would put in an amount. Um, that's from interest. Okay, I would entertain that motion. I'm sorry, oh. to the chair, I, I didn't. Um, on the back side, we're actually seeking to reappropriate um, two sources of CIP money. And really it is to do, um, to purchase a new district truck. So the truck that we have um, is a 2008 model. It has well over 100,000 miles and really is showing um, its age. So, and due to its mechanical issues and age and things. So we'd like to shift some things around, namely central office, the amount that we were um, originally planning to spend, I believe for, is that windows? Windows. Um, to utilize that and then some remaining m m funds from the central administration too. Okay. That makes sense. Is that just the regular um, pickup truck? That it is. Mm -hmm. Yes. Any questions, comments? So we would need a, a motion on that. I would entertain that motion. Make a motion to approve the warrant articles for the FY 2021 annual town meeting as presented. Second. Any further discussion? Nope. Seems good. Are we going to get scuttlebutt for that? Like that new truck? Um, the, la through, the last question. So yeah, sorry. through the chair. The, the truck, um, actually, that was the, the year that I arrived. They had just brought, bought the truck. So the truck is 12 years old um, at this point. And that's used for different purposes. So we have the two vans. The vans are used to transport children and things. Um, but the truck is really used. It helps to do some additional plowing, um, transporting furniture sometimes between facilities and things. So I wouldn't suspect so, quite honestly. I, I think a 12-year-old vehicle, it's, I, I don't even, my understanding is it could not get an inspection sticker. Oh, um, well, that kind of seals its fate. <laughs> yeah. 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 Is that something that we have to salvage, or can we turn that back over to the town? So, I, you know, I, I don't know that a decision has been made firmly on that, and I'm not sure what value it would have as a trade-in. Um, yeah. But I think what we would look to do is to see what best financial benefit we could get, and, and it's likely turning, trading it in. Trading it in, yes. Yeah. Right. Take the plow off it and trade it in. I think. You know, I'm seeking like a brand new truck. Or it would be. Things. It would be. It would be a brand new truck. Yes. The the warranty on that um, would, would be better for us. I think. And saying this one will pass inspection, I mean, it's kind of makes it a done deal. Exactly. Exactly. And, and Mr. Fahey, um, last year, one of the things he would use it for, as well as Rocket Run, but he would use the truck to pull a trailer um, to transport the students' That's instruments right. he did. for different oh, things. Yeah. So. Um, we don't want to go to Springfield with a truck that doesn't well, pass inspection. It would be really bad <laughs> if our students couldn't perform that day because the instruments were on the mess bike. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> exactly. Yeah. By the side of the road. Yeah. <laughs> exactly. All right. <laughs> well, no one should question that. But. So, all in favor, I, I did get a second on that. Mm -hmm. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 There's a vote. So I do want to share with you, and, and they're so similar that I'm going to give a, a brief summary um, for both of them. I first want to thank the instructional assistants and the secretaries for um, their great um, flexibility in the negotiations. I want to thank Dr. Chamberlain and Mrs. Worsbicki as well. But basically, um, what each of them received were COLA increases, cost of living adjustments, in each of years one, two, and three. 
they agreed to um, a switch in the health insurance from 76% um, from the town down to 75%, and also to have new employees within each of their bargaining groups to contribute 2% towards the OPEB, the other post-employment benefits. Uh, we did add a step in each of a couple of years, but other than that, they really were, um, did not ask for a lot, and, and things worked out very well. So I want to thank them, and it is our recommendation that you approve both of those. I would entertain that motion. I'll make a motion to approve the Auburn Secretary's contracts and the Auburn Instructional Assistant contracts for the years 2020 to 2021, 2021 to 2022, and 2022 to 2023. Second. Any discussion? Thank you for Thank the you bargaining. They're appreciated. <laughs> Absolutely. All in favor? Aye. Aye. There's a vote. Has there been, sorry, through the chair, has there been a lot of uh, backlash or pushback from the OPEB? Not that we can do anything about it, but. No, you know, through the, I mean, both of them opted, um, which was the original proposed language on the town side. It's for employees who come on new as of July 1st. Oh. So it does not impact any of our current employees. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. So. So, yes. <laughs> exactly. Okay. We'll entertain that next. Mm -hmm. oh, did you do both she at did, once? Yes, she did. Oh, yes. Yes, she did. The money was the same. The dates were the same. Yeah. All right. Yes. <laughs> wow. Nice job, man. Speeding Thanks. along. I tried. <laughs> oh, uh, right. question I wanted to make one. you aware that Dr. Chamberlain, Mr. Fahey, and I, um, in a recent meeting with uh, Mr. Fee wasn't at the original one, but with the town manager and CFO, they had mentioned uh, about, and this is, had been briefly talked about, I would say, for a number of years. So as they continue their work on determining the location for um, what they hope will be a joint safety complex, the question about what to do with the police station has come up. So Mr. Fahey and Dr. Chamberlain and I um, toured the um, police station on February 5th. So we wanted to make you aware, uh, that was on the 12th, I'm sorry, uh, wanted to make you aware of that. What we're doing right now is trying to collect some data around what are the annual costs to maintain that building in terms of utility costs, um, CIP, are there any items in there um, that have not yet been taken care of that may need to be? So we want to just bring back to you um, a clear picture of what future costs may be. I will say when Dr. Chamberlain and I uh, and Mr. Faye, besides the fact of getting um, locked out and we were down in the prison area, but we could see more camp right now. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. We actually had a call. I hear there's some cells down there. Yeah. <laughs> there I did have we saw the call. So um, I, have, I have actually a photo proof of it and stuff. But, um, <laughs> so there were a number of office areas. They've simply outgrown that space. Um, a number of office areas. It has a conference room. Um, what once was a, a kitchen area has now been kind of made a makeshift additional office areas and things but um, so we hope to at an upcoming meeting bring back to you for your consideration what the costs may be um, the question that remains if there was to be a, we know what it costs here um, yeah. and you know if the fire department left that into the building what would that mean um, but just want to be able to give you a, a clear picture to for you to make a determination what you'd like to see happen. I read this, excuse me, and I and my antennas went sky high. First of all, I thought um, we've got the housing group coming in, um, Ashcroft Hill mm -hmm. or something, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. and uh, and to me this was always a safety net if we needed more classroom space. Mm -hmm. um, I thought we're bringing over the older children that are past the high school mm -hmm. age. Mm -hmm. We're setting up for them, mm -hmm. um, and and my thinking was, why do they want to knock this down to put their safety complex here? And I was like, because mm -hmm. this serves us w very well, mm -hmm. with or without the fire station there. Mm -hmm. And I remember because I was teaching here when they were going to close the school, and the, the, it was voted on by the parents. They asked all the parents. And Randall ended up being the choice. It was one of the newer schools. Mm -hmm. It was big enough, but the people in town felt it was too far out. Mm -hmm. And they didn't like having to come way out here. Mm -hmm. And I'm thinking, well, why would we want our safety complex here? That's mm -hmm. what they're thinking, because it's a long way to go to get to the other side of town. Right. 
So through the chair, um, they did not mention at all that this is in consideration. Okay, so now I've started panic with my suspicions. Sure. <laughs> no, so, so this, um, as shared with us, this is not at all under consideration. Um, what I would say is, and I agree with your points quite honestly, um, we do have the Encore um, students coming over here that would extend and things. So, you know, I, I think in the new facility we could certainly make accommodations for them um, there as well. But I think it's it's one of those things that we need to have all of the information before us to make a, a wise decision because, you know, as budgets become tighter, you want to make sure that you're not creating, mm -hmm. you know, some additional expenses that, that perhaps you don't need. Uh, in terms of this building, they really don't have any set. If, if central office were to vacate here, uh, they don't have any firm plans that they've shared with us for this facility. Well, and through the chair, my question was actually from the other end, just because based on what we actually heard today from Mrs. Crayon, would we actually eventually have enough students for this to be something like that program's own annex? So mm -hmm. was it even entertained at all for both it, should you guys move, mm -hmm. should we, mm -hmm. should central offices move yeah. to that to still also maintain this mm -hmm. as, you know. No, they want to take it away from us if that's what they're. Mm -hmm. um, through the chair, I, I don't know that they necessarily want to take it away from us. I, I really think that they're getting questions, I think, um, as they do presentations about the new safety complex is, so what are you going to do with the police station that is far newer? Um, than this facility in, in, I don't know that I heard much concerns about the, the West Street um, fire station. My understanding is that they're down to, based on a report that was given, down to two locations. Um, they want to make sure that their response time can be, I think it's within three minutes, mm -hmm. any part of town. So I'll the two locations, yeah, so that's why it wouldn't be It takes here. me seven to get here, and I live in the middle of town. Yeah, mm -hmm. yeah. So, <laughs> um, so they just really wanted to know, you know, and, and honestly, I will tell you, this has been mentioned as a potential possibility for a number of years. We're just now hearing it a little bit more formally. Now, isn't the police means. station, excuse me, a two-level two, two building? It, it's actually a three-level three level building, yes, because so there's entrance from down uh, back. There is um, there is an elevator in there. It is fully handicap accessible, um, and you know it's almost hard to see. They would point us out to us. You know, this once was an office for one person. Now they've got three people in it. So they've really had to you know kind of do makeshift um, makeshift things. But it is it is three levels. In looking at it, I don't really see that. My own opinion that. The offices that we have here would require the full space, but what they said is they may be of other departments who maybe could utilize maybe the lower level or some other potential sections. So it's very much just at the talking stage right now, but I just wanted to make sure to keep all of you in the loop mm -hmm. that we had even gone in, in toward it. But we're gathering data. Uh, we received some today, and this is where Spicky's pulling some together too. So we'll keep you updated and bring that for further further discussion. Through the chair, with the budget tightness in the town coming up, is the safety complex on hold anyway, or? So my understanding is is no, but they're far off from that, okay. right? So it's probably, um, if we think about it, they, they gave us the timeline, but, you know, it would first need to get town meeting approval for mm -hmm. it, and then you go through, um, where they have to design the whole yeah, thing. So I think you're looking anyway. at a couple of years out, realistically. Okay. Um, but I think they just want to, much like when I and others went around as we were trying to, to really get support from the community about building our middle school, mm -hmm. we had had a committee that said, okay, <clears throat> the master plan team, so what are we going to do with the other schools? If we're building a brand new school, are we going to need them all? So the master plan team decided and brought forward to school committee that we, didn't, we weren't going to need Mary D or JB as educational facilities anymore. And so people knew that and knew it would get back to the town. So the town started thinking about what to do with it. So I think it's a similar situation that people are just wondering, well, if you get a new one, what are you going to do with the, the, the police station, you know? Um, I don't think there's as many questions about this here or even the Drury Square Fire Department. It's so centrally located. I'm thinking it could be a viable sale. Maybe know? because the police station was the last one built. Exactly yes. that. Yes. 
exactly that reason. But yes. my thinking is don't make your problem about what to do with the police station mm -hmm. our problem. Mm -hmm. If we're happy here, we can work with, let us leave us alone. Sure. Well, so. um, as Dr. Bunnell said, if, if it's cost effective, then it may not be a, be a problem. But no, I agree. I mean, if it's, if, it's, if it's not broken, don't try to fix it. But mm -hmm. if that is um, more economical, which it likely is. Mm -hmm. I'm not sure what all of their, their yeah. issues are. I haven't followed along, but it's a, it's a newer building. I know that. Well, well, this well I haven't toured the police station, so I mean, yeah. I haven't. Uh, I've been in multiple times. 2002. Oh, you yeah. have, huh? Per tour, it's not per tour. <laughs> I think it's 2002. I think it was. No, I think it's yeah. I, I, We attended a breakfast where they went through the whole yeah. history. Mm -hmm. It's not mm -hmm. that old. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. But this building definitely is going to need some, mm -hmm. some renovation, right. uh, especially exterior renovations, windows, um, mm -hmm. things of that sort. Mm -hmm. so if we're going to keep using it. Right. Correct. But if we're not, well. And, and that truly, when we brought, back, brought to you probably a year or 16 months ago or so, <clears throat> we put on hold a number of the CIP items for central office, windows, yeah. HVAC, and things. Mm -hmm. <clears throat> for this very reason, just as we did with JV and Mary D, we didn't want to put money into a building that we right. may not use. So the time is coming, I think, that a decision will need to be made. We just want to give you all of the data to make it. Mm -hmm. At least we got our curtains first. Yeah. That's right. Mm -hmm. yeah, that's nice. No, those would come with yeah. us. Yeah. <laughs> we got our escape outlet. So. Mm -hmm. <laughs> all right, we'll move on. Oh, 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 chair. More. If we were to move over there and it's cost effective, whatever, could we someday move the preschool here? So, through the chair, um, I'm a person who believes anything is possible, quite honestly. I would tell you that I think you would be looking at some pretty extensive renovations that would be needed. Um, the downstairs once held um, a number of classrooms, that is office and storage space now. Mm -hmm. I think you would, you, well, you would need to put in um, an elevator. It would need to be fully handicapped accessible. When I think about um, what is now Swanson Road, taking it from Auburn Middle School to Swanson Road, it took you know two and a half million dollars or so, and that had, that was money that largely we had been preserving um, and not using because we wanted to wait and see what would happen with, with the new middle school. So, you know, I, I think it's a potential possibility, um, but I they would. Any number you would imagine it would take to upgrade this, I'd encourage you to triple it because right. it just, mm -hmm. when you go out to bid and things, and I learned that with the the, height, the middle school project, our accelerator repair um, project, so I, I think it would be rather costly, yes. I think. Yeah. Not impossible. Right. So and I actually nice student week. taught downstairs, and I wouldn't recommend that situation yeah. to anyone. Yeah. I mean, all you have is a few cellar windows up, mm -hmm. up yeah. high. Um, and, yeah. mm -hmm. and moving teachers. Like constant movement. Mm, I don't yeah. think that's fair mm. to them either. And yeah. I think that that's the only reason I thought of perhaps dealing with some of our older kids, mm -hmm. only because if they're already over here, I think mm -hmm. they're different codes for sure. 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 Yeah. I, you know, I'd certainly have to give up give up the building mm -hmm. if we could use it for something, mm -hmm. but right. not if it's going to just drain funds that we're going to be out of anyway. Sure. Sure. Or can we rent it out somehow and turn it into? If you want to be a real estate man, you know, <laughs> you dog walking, real estate. She's a lady we of all talents. Wow. Rent it out. <laughs> yeah, we could make a hotel out of it. <laughs> yeah, I understand Fairfield Inn needs uh, yeah. help right now. <laughs> all right, moving on. I um, wanted to make you aware of the Unified uh, School Day Games. It is planned to be held here at the campus of Auburn High on May 29th. And Dr. Chamberlain, Mrs. Reedy, the principals, and a whole team of teachers led um, by Allie DeLuca and staff from across the district are putting together, rather than heading to Leicester for the Special Olympics, the Special Olympics is really promoting uh, Unified School Day Games, so we will have much more to share with you on it, but uh, I encourage you to mark your calendars and, and plan to stop by. So some of the children you saw in the um, be great. video tonight or the PowerPoint tonight uh, will certainly be there, one of whom stopped by to do some of her <laughs> recycling and walked into my office. This is why I know I must be a little casual someday. She's like, hey, girlfriend, how are you? <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> so it was great. And then proceeded to pull up a chair, and we had a good long conversation about her brain. So it was awesome. Your BFF. I love her. Truly. <laughs> love them all. Is that the lot. DJ? Uh, no, that oh. DJ Ray. No, no, that is. Um, <laughs> Yeah, no, that was another one, yeah. Oh, Loves Jasmine, so you may see her in this. Oh. Hey, girlfriend, huh? Right. Hey, girlfriend, yeah. I had to keep my face really straight, because I, if I laugh, she would say it to me every time she sees me. Oh. <laughs> and she probably still will. She probably oh. still will. Actually, I hope she does. That's good. That yeah. speaks highly of oh, accessibility. Um, so upcoming trips you see on here, more uh, Hanover trips, as Aaron um, shared tonight, chorus and um, all-time bass and all time chorus are upcoming and um, lots of good things and, and just as a reminder Special Olympics taking place at the high school on the weekend of the March 7th and 8th and that is I think this is its 12th year mm -hmm. 11th or 12th year running and really is a super community event on that okay. note I won't be able to make that if, if anyone going. would like to um, I was planning on attending plan on going. you were going as yeah. well okay. oh, yeah, well if you'd like to speak on behalf of the, the committee um, one of you just reach out to Mm. <laughs> <laughs> um, I did have a question though pertaining to the Unified School Day Games. Mm -hmm. Is that just Auburn High School kids? No, it's students from it's across the district. Okay. Yep, the whole district. So for be, yeah. that, the, the May 29th one. Yes. Well. Okay. Yes, Great. exactly. Thank you. And this is just to switch up the um, interview team for. Yes, the high school principal. Um, just you had voted last time. It would yeah. be Mrs. McCullough. Mrs. Kaufman. Along Mrs. Harrington. You're handing it back over? I'm okay. handing over the reins. Mm -hmm. So I would entertain that motion. I'll make a motion to re-vote to nominate Mrs. Jesse Harrington and Mrs. Dottie Kaufman as the school committee representatives on the interview team for the new principal of Auburn High School. Do I have a second? I second that. Any discussion? Mm -hmm. All in favor? Aye. 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 a vote. All right, and we now move on to teaching and learning. Hey, everyone. Thank you very much. Um, so tonight I just wanted to share with you uh, the DESI report cards that came out in the last several weeks or so. Um, you should have all, uh, if you have folks in the district, received the link to each of the school's report cards. Um, the Department of Ed has worked really hard to make some of the data that they collect more accessible to families. So I have to tell you that I was very impressed with how much information you can gain from these report cards and the ease with which you can gain it. Um, they've incorporated the use of some drop-down lists so you can get information on different populations, different uh, subjects, and some of that information uh, feeds into the accountability rating that we get each year, which we talked about at the beginning of this school year for the prior year as well. So um, I encourage folks to take a look at it. Uh, it's very user friendly. It, it coordinates via subgroups. Um, and I think they've done a nice job with really trying to get some understandable data out to families and schools. Um, and I think even it's, it's good for school districts because it really pairs it down and gets to the heart of some things. So very useful information. And as a Title I district, we are required to share that data, which we have done so and posted all of that on our website. So um, that was a good thing. We also, I just wanted to take a moment to thank um, our uh, staff that support our English learners. So they have completed the access testing again this school year, um, which I, I don't know if you're aware, but all of that now happens. It's uh, primarily computer-based. Some of the speaking takes place with the use of microphones that the staff have to train the students on how to use. Um, but I will tell you that our staff that support our students are top-notch. They are professional. They are prepared. They follow the letter of the law when it comes to the testing procedures um, and so we'll await those results but our results in the past have been quite good and I anticipate they will continue to be so so a lot of good things happening good and then when did those through the chair when are those com or when do we get the results back from those Not late in the spring late, late in the spring okay. yeah great thank you all right that's all you have. That's it for tonight. Thank you for that. Mm -hmm. We now move on to everyone's favorite time of the evening, business and financial. <laughs> good, e good evening, everyone. Um, a year-to-date budget report 
uh, dated February 12th, has been placed in your packet for your information and review. And I'd be happy to answer any questions if there are any. Any questions, comments? Seeing none. Okay. Next, I've included budget transfers within the same series for your information and two budget transfers between different series and ask for your vote of approval. I would entertain that motion. I have a motion to approve the transfers between the series as provided by the business manager. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? I just have a question through the chair. Are we short crossing guards? Oh, it just looks like we're, we're transferring money from funds that are all allocated for crossing guard from right. Maybe there, I'm was, there was some extra money left there. Oh, just so we're, uh, it's we okay. get to cover additional out of district transportation. Needs. Okay, no, just I didn't know if we were oh. short on staff because mm -hmm. I know earlier in the year we were looking mm -hmm. for. Mm -hmm. We still are. Oh, and, okay. And just to do the chair, we still are looking for crossing guards. On um, we're accepting applications for positions, and we're also you know for substitute positions when people are out. Okay. So we still are doing that. So. And, and if we do hire more, we will make sure they're compensated. So. Okay. But, okay. No, we're Thank definitely. You. Okay. All in favor? All right. Aye. All right. There's a vote. Okay. And next, the school department had a bid opening for school bus transportation on Thursday, January 30th um, at 2 p.m. We received a single bid. It was from AA Transportation Company, and it was deemed to be a valid bid response. The bid quoted a reasonable 3% increase for regular education transportation in each of the three years of the contract, with pricing options to extend for two one-year periods if the um, district feels that would be in their best interest. Um, with the bid pricing as presented, the district will recognize the savings of $22,654 in the FY21 uh, proposed budget line for regular education busing. So that'll be among one, stuff, one of our cuts that we'll be mm -hmm. putting in, you know, as part of the reduction in the um, budget. And based on the bid result, along with our successful partnership with AA Transportation currently and in past contracts, I would like to recommend that you award AA Transportation the school bus transportation contract for the three years, beginning with fiscal year 21 and ending in fiscal year 2023 with the option to extend for two one-year periods at the district's discretion. I would entertain that motion. As the cited by the business manager. Yes. I'll make that motion. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? This is the company we've been using for years now, right? Yes, it yes. is, and we have a very good relationship with mm -hmm. them. They've been very supportive of our needs and, and okay. very helpful. Good. So. All in favor? Aye. 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 There's a vote. Right, and the last thing I want to just let you know is that um, I've been dealing with Mrs. Sautner on, um, we've been collecting bus applications. We have started, things have started to come in, and we have a, a little over 300 currently that have come through. Wow. So. Well, wow, excellent. We start out to a good That's about halfway or a little less than that. Well, we've got <laughs> a long way to go, but <laughs> no, at least it's a ahead. start, so um, I just it's, uh, <laughs> it's a small start, but it's good. We're ahead of where we yeah, yeah, usually we're right. normally so we are. Okay. So we're that's happy. why I wanted to say thank you. Yes. Okay. <laughs> You'll get mine May 31st. <laughs> <laughs> There's a lot of people that think like you. I just never remember. I'll be in just after you. <laughs> 3 30. So that'll be a, that's it for my report, and thank you. Thank you. Thank you. We now move on to personnel. So we have three um, job descriptions. We actually, um, so a physical therapist, we have not had on staff uh, previously. We've had a physically physical therapy assistant, but we are looking at um, delivery models, and it may actually be wiser for us uh, in, in neutral cost to have a physical therapist on staff rather than having to contract out. So mm -hmm. there is a job description there for that. The ODA, which used to be called a CODA, it, it's now an occupational therapy assistant. Um, that individual is retiring this year. So we have updated that job description. It is my recommendation that you approve that. And then the third one is for the assistant vocational coach. So Mrs. Querion's presentation as a transition coordinator vocational coach tonight as you know, with the Encore program that we hope to bring here, 
we think it would be wise to bring on board an assistant vocational coach. Obviously, she can't be everywhere at all the time. So those three job descriptions, uh, and I thank Dr. Chamberlain and Mrs. Reedy um, for their tremendous input on them. I do recommend approval. Yes, she seems like she's quite busy. Yes. <laughs> doing wonderful things. I would entertain that motion. Either one. Or all. Uh, or all. Okay. I'll make a motion to approve the job descriptions for physical therapist and occupational therapy assistant and for the job description for assistant vocational coach. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? And just to clarify, none of these are at risk when we're having budget discussions, correct? For Through the chair, no. Okay. Uh, it would be, in fact, I would anticipate maybe one of the assistant vocational coach come, could come from our instructional assistant or ABA pools. Okay. Um, just a realignment in the other two. So no, no impact on it. Okay. okay. Yes. Great. Thank you. You're welcome. That's what I was going to ask, yeah, just to make sure, to see if this was for this year only, the rest of this year only, or if it's something we'll carry it, on. They will continue on. So the, the coder actually retires um, mid-June, mid-May, excuse me, so that has been posted. Um, the physical therapist would start in the fall because that individual is retiring um, in June, and the other one would be a, likely a transfer from within our pool already. Through the chair, it says master's degree preferred for physical therapists. Yes. Can. Can they bill if they don't have a master's? Like, would we be able to do billing? We, um, through the chair, so we don't do any billing. Okay. This is only um, services provided for students who are on the IEP or 504 okay. require it. Okay. So we don't do any billing. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? All in favor? All right. Okay. All right. This is a vote. We now move on to policies. So, but for the first, um, when they are JBBB, Educational equity. I do recommend you approve that on second reading. And then the remaining ones, um, if you're so inclined, you could take in one group. As noted in here in the track changes, um, many of them have minimal um, changes noted, and, and others of varying degree. I do want to point out to you, though, just to make sure that you see it. Um, policy IMG, Animals in Schools, mm. that is one that we have had for um, a number of years now. And if you remember, there was a, a meeting where we had a mom. We used to have a, a, a service dog in the schools. But what's being added here is um, the possibility of therapy dogs in the schools. And, and you may remember that yes. from yeah. the, the fall conference. And we actually have a staff member who has uh, a small dog who is at the very end of the training around this, and uh, I think it would be a great uh, addition to the schools. It would be something that we would look to start um, very small and in a targeted way, but other districts ha that have done this um, have found great, great success, not only for the students, but uh, also for staff. Yeah. 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 That is amazing. Yeah. I heard yeah. a certain staff member. Yeah. Had a very upsetting day and went and found the therapy yeah. dog. <laughs> <laughs> well, I've had students, because they have them where I take students clinically, and I'll walk down to a unit one day and my yeah. student told them the dog crying. Yeah, yeah, like, yeah. Oh, yeah. yeah. All right, I guess it works. <laughs> yeah, it does. Yeah. Um, the do if it's the dog, I'm thinking right. about who was going to bring to the meeting, I think at one point, and then they didn't come in to so one of our meetings, but uh, I think that would be a great addition. Oh, yeah. Mm. Yeah. I would just perhaps make sure, whatever we do, if we're going to be changing the policy in here, to make sure that we are um, considering any kids that might be afraid of dogs. Right. You know, right. obviously we will deal with it. Yes. With yeah. Yeah. It was pretty well all in a very it. very professional I manner. Yeah. But yeah. Yeah. Um, it, it absolutely does in, in for allergies and things. So it, it's, um, it's been with some guidance from area districts that have them uh, in MASC. So I, I think we're going to decide to see them more and more. I think it's mm -hmm. great, though. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah. Great. Yeah. I would entertain that motion for uh, assistant location uh, coach. Make the motion to approve the above name policy on the second reading. Uh, policy JDB. Oh. <laughs> yeah, that's JDB. Right. <laughs> Do I have second. a second? Second. second. Oh. Excuse me. All in favor? I <laughs> <laughs> scared uh, myself with that one. <laughs> <There's a vote. laughs> <laughs> I'm like, let's go, let's go. <laughs> <laughs> oh. so what happens when we hit the two hour mark? I know. <laughs> <laughs> Is that all of them? 
And then um, through the chair, the recommended motion isn't there, but for the remainder ones noted above from BEDH down to JKAA, recommend your approval. I make that motion. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 a vote. And we need an executive session, so we'll entertain that motion. Okay, there's one on the table, and there's a shorter one on the pro on the program. Just the one on the program. The one on the agenda, yeah. The one on the agenda. Yes. Yeah. Okay. For a Mass General Law, Chapter 30, Section 21A2, to conduct strategies for negotiations with union and non-union personnel, I move that we go into executive session. Do I have a second? Second. Roll call vote. Dr. McQuillan. Yes. Mrs. Kaufman. Yes. Mrs. Holloway. Yes. Mrs. Harrington. Yes. Mr. Scobie. Yes. It is a vote. Good night, everyone.